here you can see the software tools used for the project. XLW is the tool that allows you to export the C++ functions into Excel and thus combine the computational power of C++ with the flexible interface that is easy to create in Excel or Excel VBA. XLW is very simple to use. There are a few XLW tutorials on YouTube and a mail list where you can ask technical questions. This project is first and foremost an exercise in developing a few healthy C++ design habits that I took verbatim from a book of Professor Mark Joshi. I highly recommend it to all entry-level quantitative developers. If you are not a quantitative developer and have no idea what derivatives are, this book can still be useful because design principles are universal. If you want to learn how to write a clear, computationally efficient and extendable code, as opposed to a quick and dirty one, this book is for you. Besides, it contains detailed reference information about a few practically important XLW classes. In total, Professor Joshi describes 12 design principles and patterns, and 8 of them are used in my project. The remaining 4 are not used, but I will talk about them anyway. The reason is that, as Professor Joshi says, thinking about why a certain pattern is not applicable for your project leads to a more efficient design just as well. First, let me show you the class diagram for the C++ part of the project. The class PE test, PE stands for Performance Evaluation, is an abstract class whose job is to define the interface. The main interface method is the overloaded function call operator, which is called to compute the test results. The concrete classes PE sign test, runs test, and correlation test are derived from PE test, and they have the very same members as PE test. The only exception is runs test that has an additional private member function. The open closed principle states that the code has to be open for extension. For instance, you may wish to add a new kind of test. At the same time, the code has to be closed for modification. When you add new features, you shouldn't have to recompile the existing files. Recompilation can be time consuming and, in some cases, impossible because you don't always have access to the source code for the existing libraries. The usage of inheritance helps us sustain the open-closed principle. To add a new test, you only have to add a new header and a CPP, a CPP file for that test without having to recompile any of the existing classes. Note that, as I talk about the design principles, I only refer to the C++ part of the project. In particular, I wrote a well-structured and well-commented Excel VBA interface, but the VBA code certainly deviates from the open-closed principle. When you add a new test, you have to add its name to this part of the wizard, and for that you'll have to modify the existing code. I don't see a straightforward way to extend this interface without modifying the existing code. If you have an idea, please let me know. The next design principle is the separation of interface and implementation. C++ students are routinely told that encapsulation is the cornerstone of object-oriented programming, but to me it wasn't very clear why the class insides need so much protection until I read Professor Josh's book. For instance, here I have a private member function called runs-pmf. It implements the exact probability mass function for the number of runs. The point is, it's about implementation of the runs test rather than its interface. If I decide to make it public, then the user can invoke it di directly through a runs test object. Then, if I decide to change this function, 
the user's existing code won't compile unless he searches his code for every single line where the function is invoked and makes manual corrections. To avoid that, I make this function private and thus separate the interface from implementation. I would say that this separation principle is developed even more in XLW. XLW has a class argument list whose role is to separate the function prototype from the function implementation. The class was created to deal with the problem of variable number or types of function arguments. Now, instead of specifying a bunch of arguments, it's enough to specify just one parameter of type argument list. In particular, that's how the main method of class pTest is declared, where one argument list is used for input parameters and another one for getting the results. Even if we decide to change the number or type of input of out or output parameters for this method, the prototype will remain exactly the same. The price that we pay for this flexibility is twofold. First, the implementation of argument list is not computationally efficient because it was designed for interface purposes. For example, querying argument list in a loop is not a good idea. Secondly, the input data are rarely in a form of argument list, meaning that we have to spend resources on some extra copying of data. This leads us to another design pattern, the adapter pattern. Suppose we have a useful class, but its interface is not what the rest of the code expects. Therefore, we create a wrapper class that transforms one interface into another. I haven't created such wrapper class in the project, but still, the idea of transforming one interface into another has been implemented. For instance, for the sign test, the following C++ function is exported to Excel. Trade history are those three columns of input data that you saw in the demonstration. Thanks to input verification, I can be sure that those columns are all numerical, and therefore I can use XLW's NE matrix type that is more efficient to use with numerical data than another XLW, XLW's class cell matrix. The point is, to compute the test results, I have to query the test object inside the sign test results function, where smart test PTR is the pointer to uh, the sign test object. Since it takes argument list, I will have to make an argument list out of an E matrix first. Therefore, the function sign test results works as a wrapper around this, the test object and it may be called an adapter also. The next design principle is that of code reuse. The reuse happens in two ways. First, when we extend a class, we don't need to reproduce the existing implementation. We just add some new class members. For this simple pro project, it's not very relevant because here we extend an abstract class, which has no implementation at all. Secondly, when we use virtual functions, we can get away with not knowing the exact object type at compile time. Otherwise, we may have to write a switch statement that would branch depending on the object type, with each branch containing a very similar code. In this project, this can be illustrated as follows. The function call operator that computes the test results is a virtual function. When we want to compute a particular test, it looks like where the pointer smart test PTR can point to any one of the concrete test objects. So this code is independent of the exact object type. Another, more conventional meaning of code reuse is that if you have access to a trusted external library, it's better to leverage it rather than to reinvent the wheel. It may take some time to learn how to use someone else's product. The advantage is that 
since many people have already used that library, the probability of getting a bug is small. To drive home the point, let me show you the full list of headers for this project. XLW headers, boost headers for the accumulator class that I use to compute means, variances and correlations, and other STL and boost headers including the binomial header that I used for computing the exact p-values instead of relying on a normal approximation. That's a good number of headers given that the total count of C++ lines is not large, about 700. On the other hand, that's the main reason why the C++ part is of such a modest volume.